Today we're going to talk about one more rule for the derivative. We had the product rule and the quotient rule. Um, there's one more important rule of that same sort of a nature that we need to talk about. This is a rule, it's not for when things are multiplied, which is the product rule, or divided, which is the quotient rule. It's for when you have one function stuck inside of another function. It's a rule for, um, this is called compositions. Composition of functions is when you have one thing inside of another thing. Here, I mean something like this, x squared plus 1 to the uh, 15 power, all right? What would you do if I asked you to find the derivative of that? Okay, it's not a product. It's not like this thing times 15. That would be a product, but it's not a product because this is not times 15. It's to the 15th power. So really what you have here is the function which is the 15th power, that's one function, and then inside of that function you have this thing, x squared plus one, all right? That's a composition of functions. And for that, you need a rule, and that rule is called the chain rule. Um, I'm just gonna write out what is the chain rule. Here's what it is. This one actually is, um, is pretty complicated to uh, write, to go through the derivation, so I hope you don't mind. I'm just gonna skip over it. We're just gonna talk about how you use the chain rule. The chain rule is actually, I would say, probably more important than the other two that we just uh, product in the quotient. You're going to use this all the time. Anyway, here's how you do it. If you have one function on the inside and one function on the outside, what's the derivative? It's this. You take the derivative of the outer function and you leave the same thing on the inside of it and then you multiply and you multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So it looks like that. This is the chain rule, all right? Put that in a box somewhere. Very important. Okay, um, although I'm not sure, it's a little, I don't know if it's helpful actually to memorize this as a formula. I would just say what you have right here in words is this is the derivative of the outside, because that's the f is the outside, and then here is the derivative of the inside and you multiply them together. So you take the derivative on the outside and you leave the same thing inside, and then you multiply by the derivative on the inside. All right, not too complicated, right? Let's, let's just try a bunch of examples. Let's do this one first. Okay, ready to do this example? We got the derivative of a composition. So first of all, you have to think about like what is the f and what is the g? What is the outside and what is the inside? Now over here, the f is like what you see first, but that's actually not always the case. In this example, what's the inside and what's the outside? The inside is x squared plus one, and the outside is this 15th power over here, even though it's kind of on this, uh, on the right, right most in this formula, it's still the outer thing, all right? So what do you do? You take the derivative of the outer part and leave the same inner part. What that looks like is you do the derivative of this 15th power thing. How do you do the derivative of a 15th power? You bring the 15 out front, you change it to a 14. What goes on the inside? The same inside, right? G of X, the same inside, like so, okay? It's actually a pretty common mistake. People will try to take the derivative on the inside also. Don't do that. The chain rule says you take the derivative on the outside and you leave the same thing on the inside and then separately you multiply by g prime of x, that's the derivative of the inside, and the inside is x squared plus 1, the derivative of that is 2x. That's it, this is the derivative of that. As always, you could try and simplify that if you want to, you could combine the 2 and the 15 because of the multiplication, that's 30. Awesome, right? I don't, I don't care about that, okay? this is. Uh, this is not a class about do you know how to multiply 2 times 15. It's a class about do you know how to do the derivative. That's the important step, all right? That's your answer. Uh, let's just try a couple more. How about that? Derivative of the square root of 2x to the minus 1 plus 3. You like that? Probably not. I don't know. Um, what should we do with this? As always, you should rewrite the square root as a 1 half power. It is basically never helpful to write a square root with that radical sign, use the one-half power. So that's gonna be like this, two x to the minus one plus three to the one-half, all right? And now actually this should look a lot like that. I mean, it's 
it has the same format, right? Some stuff and then an exponent. So we do the derivative by bringing the exponent down front. Same thing on the inside, and now I should decrease the exponent by one, so that would be one half minus one, which is negative one half, right? And then multiply by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of the inside? You just do your derivative as usual. It's gonna be uh, minus two x to the minus two, plus derivative of three is zero, so that's that. All right, this is it, that's your answer. Let's just try one more, and I think that'll do us. Okay, I got the derivative of x times x squared plus 2x to the 7, that whole thing to the 10. You like that? I bet you do. Um, how do you do this? Well, this much of it looks similar to the ones that we've been doing using the chain rule. Okay, so this like second part of it, you use the chain rule. But um, what about the fact that this is multiplied by x? Uh, one thing that might occur to you is to distribute the x inside of the parentheses, but you can't do that because of this 10th power here. You can't distribute inside the 10th power. Um, what you're going to have to do, uh, rather than that, is this is multiplication, right? So you're going to do the product rule, all right? I, where the first part is x and the second part is all of that, okay? And at some point while you're doing the product rule, you're going to have to take the derivative of this part, and when that moment comes, you do the chain rule because this right here is a thing inside of another thing, all right? Let's do it. So, like I said, first and foremost, this is a product rule, because it's a product right there. So I'm gonna go, I hope you remember the product rule. The first thing times the derivative of the second thing plus the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. So the first thing is that x. Now the derivative of the second part, I gotta do the chain rule. So taking the derivative just of this much, you go the derivative on the outside, so the 10 here, the same stuff inside, to the 9, all right? That's the derivative of the outside function, the outside being the 10th um, power. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. What is the derivative of x squared plus 2x to the 7? That would be 2x plus 14x to the 6, right? Okay, that was the chain rule. Remember, this is all just part of the product rule, though. I go to the first thing times the derivative of the second thing. I did that much already. And then plus, I'm out of space on that line. This is all the same thing. Plus the second part times the derivative of the first part. So I, I go the second part as is. That's easy enough. And then times the derivative of the first part. And what is the derivative of x is one. So this is times one. All right, that's your answer. This is So this is like a product rule and a chain rule. It's actually the, the chain rule happening inside of the product rule, but sometimes that's what it takes.